The Unshackled Waves, episode 190. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. Scott Morrison, well last week he was being a conservative, wanting to defend religious freedom. This week he was being a progressive, promoting a new national day to recognise Indigenous Australians and wanting to fight the gender pay gap. The ABC board has fired their managing director, Michelle Guthrie, only two and a half years into a five-year term, citing her difficult leadership style and uh, inability to handle uh, liaising with the federal government. But of course, nothing will change at the ABC. As a result, it will still be the same leftist institution. Sam Newman is retiring from the footy show after 25 years, and it is sadly an end of an era, as we will never see another TV presenter be so unashamed against uh, political correctness. In the United States, Trump's Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh has now been accused by two women of sexual assault as progressives and Democrats are attempting to derail his confirmation by any means necessary. To discuss the, all these topics, I am joined again by the senior editor of The Unshackled, Damien Ferry. Damien, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me, Tim. I've had you on uh, two out of the past uh, three weeks, so it's almost like old times. It's been good to catch up for a regular chat. Yeah, it is. I mean, when when you're flat out at work and obviously with children and family and all the rest of it, it's um, sometimes hard to get that little bit of time, but always uh, focused on trying to put as much effort and, and as much time as I can in um, contributing to the Unshackled and putting our message forward. Well, there's a lot to talk about uh, this week, and uh, our new Prime Minister, Scott Morrison's had an interesting uh, week. uh, What he's put on the agenda this week is he's uh, pledged his support for a separate national day for Indigenous people. He says that uh, he wants to keep Australia Day on January uh, 26, but has proposed another uh, public holiday. And now, uh, a lot of us have been discussing today, uh, is this, has Scott Morrison caved into the anti-Australia Day lobby? Because it's been pretty pretty much, uh, conservatives have been united in defending uh, Australia Day for the last few years after all the the local councils had their their motions to move Australia Day. And of course, Mark Latham and Jacinda Price had their Save Australia Day campaign at now looks like that Scott Morrison, he's, he's capitulated to the, to the left and, and basically let, uh, let them, or not a, what they really want to do is abolish Australia Day, but he's, he's given them ceded ground to them. I think he definitely has. Uh, something that we see very often on the right is that the politicians always end up compromising their positions. So something that happens quite often is you'll never see someone on the left trying to compromise and deal with the right and trying to take a softer stance on something they really believe in. But on the right, you see it all the time. Um, ScoMo, of course, thinking that he's actually winning or getting a win out of this because by doing this, he's saving Australia Day from, uh, from being changed. But at the end of the day, he's still catering to their narrative that um, uh, the virtue signalling of um, of trying to, um, how can I say, promote these uh, minority groups rather than um, have an inclusive event that uh, focuses on Australians as a whole, uh, having to cause division, of course, which is what the left are trying to do, but he's just doing it in the, in the same way. I mean, I actually seen um, multiple uh, news uh, news websites on Facebook today that were putting polls out and they were asking simply um, in reference to Scott Morrison's decision, should um, there be a separate day uh, to recognise the Indigenous Australians of this country? And I couldn't vote yes and I couldn't vote no because I, I really didn't know how to vote in that. 
I mean, if I voted yes, I'll be saying that uh, this virtue signalling day uh, should exist, and we don't win in that. And by saying no at the same time, that also caters to the idea that, um, like many of the left say, that no, it shouldn't be on another day, it should be on Australia Day, and Australia Day should be axed. So either way, really, it wasn't much of an option. It was two, si two sides of the same coin. So it was. Um, it's not giving people much of a say and it's really a, a disgraceful position for Scott Morrison to take when all he had to do was just continue to ignore the, the, the loud minority of people that are, are out in the street every Australia day. But instead he was the one who came out and made this an issue when he didn't even have to. And it's, you're never going to satisfy the left though. If you cave in on one uh, issue, they're going to say, well, we want more. I mean, look, uh, for example, on another Indigenous issue, uh, Tony Abbott wanted the the, uh, the referendum on constitutional recognition uh, of Indigenous Australians, and uh, that, all the Indigenous activists, they were excited about that for a little while, but then they thought, hang on, we can get more, and then they had uh, the Uluru Statement from the Heart, where it's like, oh, we, we don't want just uh, a place in the Constitution anymore, we want an Indigenous voice to parliament basically or nearly a third chamber of parliament so all scott morrison is likely to do with this is just uh, uh, basically encourage the left to increase their demands i mean well they've already made clear what they they really want they just don't want to change the date i mean we saw last australia Day, they want to abolish it they they believe that we have nothing to be proud of in australia and so we shouldn't have a national day that's that's pretty much where they're at and uh, scott morrison today certainly isn't going to satisfy them that's right tim scott morrison has to stop appeasing the left because he's not going to get anywhere with them they just take advantage when it comes to our indigenous australians we've got so many days so many days throughout the year that acknowledge their their presence in this country i mean we have nadoc week we have national sorry day national reconciliation week anniversary of the formal apology national close the gap day anniversary of the 1967 referendum mabo day and many more so we don't need another day separate i mean what what tony abbott says was right we uh, shouldn't be creating a separate day for indigenous australians we should be continuing uh, having Australia Day as the day that celebrates all Australian citizens. And to take this position where we all of a sudden want to create another day just so that we try and save the current day, that's really going soft here. And I mean, Scott Morrison didn't have to bring this up he could have just ignored it like every other pm had in the past that uh, allowed minority obviously you know want to cause this division in in our society and he didn't have to say anything about it but he's actually raised it to try and score political points in here and try to beat the left at their game and he can't do it it just doesn't work that way yeah i mean he's directly responding to uh, Byron Shire Council in New South Wales because it was uh, well, the first council in New South Wales to announce that it was moving uh, its Australia Day events uh, a day earlier to January uh, 25th. Now, uh, the uh, the Turnbull government, they stripped uh, councils of their ability to hold citizenship ceremonies if they uh, didn't uh, hold them on, on January uh, tw uh, 26th. So it had always been a hardline uh, position uh, from the federal government, but Scott Morrison, uh, as soon as uh, another councils uh, followed the the three uh, inner Melbourne councils, he's well. He said, "Oh, we'll yeah, we'll withdraw their their ability to hold citizenship ceremonies." But at the same time, he's cap uh, capitulating. It's hardly a crackdown on councils if you're saying, "Well, we don't approve of what you did." I mean, Scott Morrison's said about the council that's indulgent, self self loathing. Uh, doesn't make Australia uh, stronger. I mean, uh, nobody can deny uh, uh, that uh, that's when the, the First Fleet uh, came on January 26, 1788, uh, but uh, we can uh, reflect in, uh, on what we've accomplished. So he's basically tr saying that 
oh, I don't approve what you're doing, but I understand where you're coming from. And yeah, this is probably here, one of his first big major cultural tests, Scott Morrison, and he seems to have failed. Well, Scott Morrison, when he first came into the job, he actually said that he wasn't going to be a culture warrior. And it, um, it seems to be the case. And obviously, another thing we discussed a couple of weeks ago was that Scott Morrison was big on this whole um, uh, keeping Australians together, this whole diversity sort of uh, slogan that he's been pushing here. And I just don't understand it. I mean, it was supposed to be a, a change from the Turnbull years where it, it pretty much seems like nothing's changed at all. Um, Scott Morrison, by doing this, has softened his position and basically it's it's made the left win here because even if he was to gain a, a separate day um, for uh, Indigenous Australians and, I mean, he automatically thinks that the Australia Day protests will stop, which it probably won't because why would they, even if they get their own day? And um, second of all, even if they were to stop, it still isn't a win because he had to cave in and he had to give them that day, which they didn't deserve because they've got so many days already. So he's already lost the argument here. He's already made their extreme views on trying to change the date or, you know, that somehow we should be ashamed of our past. He's making their views mainstream by addressing this. And he should have just not addressed it at all. He should have just went on and just ignored them and basically, you know, even pointed at them as, um, you know, radicals, which they are, you know. I mean, it, it just doesn't help and it's just destroyed uh, our cause. Labor on Sunday announced a new policy that it would force uh, companies with more than a thousand employees to disclose their gender wage uh, gaps. Now, the, the gender wage gap, uh, as we both know, is a, a myth. And the reason why there's this disparity between what men and women are is because they have different life choices. Uh, women, they, they tend to uh, f uh, take time off from work to, to raise uh, children, and so they don't get to the uh, same uh, same positions within a field or a company as a man. It's just a, a fact uh, of life, despite uh, the, the the fact that the, the feminists they want uh, women to, to work uh, as as much as possible. They they still want uh, women still want to be uh, mothers uh, a lot of the time. Now you you would hope that a conservative would say you know we uh, we're not bothering with this uh, gender pay gap stuff but scott morrison uh, said that he was uh, open uh, to this uh, proposal from labor and actually tweeted that oh the gender wage gap increased from 15.5 to 17.2 percent uh, under labor uh, now under my gov uh, the governments of the coalition it's fallen to 14.5 percent so he's he's basically run with it now a lot of uh, commentators were saying oh scott morrison he's done a lot to set the agenda he's basically taken labor's agenda on this and on an issue such as such as this yes i mean i, I was just thinking then uh, i mean could you just imagine if somebody in the labor party used the same tactic and attack the Liberal Party for uh, an increase in abortions or um, an increase in degeneracy. I mean, you'd just laugh at that, wouldn't you? I mean, it would never happen. I mean, because he's basically going after the Labor Party for not being left-wing enough. I mean, this is how stupid this is. I mean, um, of course, the, the, the pay gap, the gender pay gap is a myth, as, we bo as you uh, mentioned. Um, not only due to life choices, but to occupations. I mean, there's not many women miners out there. And obviously mining is a job that um, gets a good wage because it's hard work. And there's a lot of uh, risks involved. People put their lives on the line and they could die. I mean, and, and get injured badly. Um, whereas many women or most women are in jobs um, such as office work and, and, and so forth. So of course, when you look at these things, it's um, not that they're getting paid different at all, because if there was a woman that was in the exact same position as a man, if both of them were minors, both of them were office jobs, 
they would get paid the exact same. And that's where it's a myth because they get the same amount of money. They just look at the overall figures and say, well, men are getting uh, earning more, but that's because of the choices because women don't want to get their hands dirty. They don't want to be in these roles that require that sheer hard work, uh, physically draining, and that's why uh, men may be earning more, but it's not because of the, this pay gap. It's because of the occupations and also the life choices, such as pregnancies and so forth that you were talking about. You can't have it both ways in this. And it just seems like they really want to make life difficult for themselves. It's uh, the pr the reason why Scott Morrison's probably reacted this way is because he feels that uh, Labor has successfully wedged the the, the coalition on women's uh, issues due to this uh, uh, continued story about uh, female Liberal MPs being bullied and the fact that their uh, female uh, representation is only twenty five percent of uh, all of their MPs, and so Morrison's probably thinking, well, I've got to show that I'm uh, uh, pro female. Is so so he's uh, ba basically trying to up one uh, on labor and th that that's another thing that you you should not do if you're uh, accused of of doing of uh, this you know grave uh, uh, cultural injustice uh, by the left uh, you you don't say oh you know don't accuse me of that look 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 what I've done on the the, the gender pay gap I mean, he again. He's playing. He's playing into the the, the left hands. Uh, he, uh, he. They're getting him to uh, talk on their issues. That's right. Exactly. I mean, this is this is the the whole plan here. I mean, the what the right should be doing is getting the left talking about immigration issues. I mean, they could use that tactic very easily, and it has worked in the past. That, that um, Labor had to address um, what position they had on um, asylum seekers and on immigration, and then there was that whole push from the left that they wanted to um, make sure that with the offshore detention and all sorts of things. And I mean, that really then at the time wedged the Labor Party because of that. And this is what the right need to do. I mean, but instead they are playing Labor's game here and they are talking about issues that the Labor Party are ultimately gaining from. And I mean, just raising it is bad enough. I mean, when it comes to women representation in Parliament, who cares how many per percentage points there is? I mean, it shouldn't be an issue. We shouldn't even be discussing it. And just talking about it and saying, oh, well, you know, I'm doing this you know, right in this circumstance and the Labor Party are, are not doing the right thing here and they could be doing more. I mean, it's just playing right into their hands because it's making it an issue and they're laughing at this. I mean, because we shouldn't be discussing, you know, those quotas. I mean, I also read today that uh, the Labor Party, that there was internal um, uh, peoples in the Labor Party was trying to push Bill Shorten into um, getting quotas for um, gays and also Aboriginal <laughs> Australians as well within the party. And um, one thing that I actually mentioned was that if there was to be quotas um, for both Aboriginals and, and for, for gay people, that um, they would actually have to fire people because there's more people in Parliament that um, are especially, you know, um, LGBT um, uh, representatives in Parliament than they are in the percentage of the Australian population. So this is this is something that they really have to think hard about here because they might um, not they might you know um, not not be wanting what they what they get out of this wish. And so it's always interesting to see how such uh, ideas like that are implemented. Now uh, the the week began with a, a big uh, bombshell out of the the ABC the. Uh, ABC board sacked the managing director, uh, Michelle Guthrie, uh, the, the chairman of the ABC, uh, Justin uh, Milne. Uh, he cited her leadership style and her relationship with the, the federal government, uh, hinting that she didn't perform well uh, when being asked questions at uh, Senate estimates. They didn't trust her that she'd be able to secure the uh, funding from the government that, w uh, that was uh, needed. And now much was made that she was the first uh, female managing director of the uh, the, uh, the ABC, and uh, this was uh, seen as of oh, 
well, given that it's the ABC, a, a, she, she was breaking the, the, the glass ceiling, but uh, uh, there, there was actually not, uh, not a lot of uh, love for her uh, at the ABC. And, uh, John Fane from ABC Radio Melbourne called uh, her tenure an astonishing fail and said that she just didn't get the organization at all, didn't uh, pay it uh, much respect. And it se seemed like that everyone now agrees that she was uh, awful and uh, a, t a terrible choice. And well, if she was the affirmative action uh, candidate, then it's, 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 it's not a good uh, development for uh, putting affirmative action candidates forward or picking someone just because they're a woman or whatever. Yeah, again, I mean, it, the, the issue of her being a woman shouldn't be a concern, but of course they're going to make it a concern because it suits many people's agendas here. Um, and like you were saying before, we've got the, the issue on um, obviously quotas and all the rest of it. And so this whole issue on, you know, the pay gap. So of course they're going to make an issue out of her being a woman and removed from her job, of course. Um, but the problem is here that um, who are they going to replace her with? I mean, she might be hopeless at a job, but nobody that goes in that position is going to be any better. So um, this is the, the problem with the public sector is that they're, they're just overpaid and underworked. So um, they don't have real job life experience. They just get straight in there um, into a very cushy job and uh, they don't have any skills. They don't know what they're doing or have any intellect and um, they're, they're just in their own sort of bubble. And like, like uh, in this case here, it, it ends up being the, you know, someone has, having to come out and say, look, you know, something's not right here and, and yes, yeah, some changes need to be made, but uh, I just don't see them really making any changes that are going to benefit. I mean, the ABC, uh, all in all, I mean, it's just a, a, a cesspit that needs to be really, you know, destroyed. I mean, um, I actually read... Uh, Lyle Shelton today, he was mentioning um, or reiterating the Australian conservative um, uh, push that they were wanting now to uh, merge the ABC and SBS into one and, and you know, therefore shrinking it and, and, and making it a little bit more, um, uh, I guess you could say, uh, manageable. But um, yeah, you know, something needs to be done here. It's, uh, I mean, the ABC, you, you even you even had um, uh, Tom Bollard um, coming out. Uh, obviously, you know, a well-known ABC presenter that got sacked not long ago with his show, but uh, coming out and um, endorsing the Victorian socialists. So, um, yeah, they, you know, uh, it, under it, socialism, yeah. uh, we'd all be forced to watch his show, or <laughs> they'd, they'd only be the ABC is the only station. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's probably why why he'd support him because you know, um, in, in this kind of environment, he didn't do well, and um, they got rid of him. Otherwise, you know, people wouldn't have the choice um, under the system that that he he wants. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but you're right that nothing will change uh, at the ABC as a result of this. I mean, it's it's all about how the the ABC approaches the the digital uh, age and uh, reaching uh, audiences in online. Uh, so so that's all it is. There's never ever going to really be a cultural change at the ABC. I think I've, I, I've, I think I remember it was Latham or Andrew Bolt who called it the the, the leftist uh, employee collective. They they run the, the ABC. If anyone tries to change it, a managing director or any members of the board, uh, they'll be uh, chased out of there. I mean, John Howard, during his 11 years as uh, prime minister, uh, wasn't able to change it that much, but what, what you can do is uh, reduce uh, its its funding. What the uh, Turnbull now Morrison government has has done is uh, frozen its increase in funding, and we know in this day and age that a uh, incre uh, freezing of an increase is termed a a cut. And the the ABC they they always threaten to close all the regional news centres and uh, cut uh, news programming. They never they never cut any of the the, the bloated. Uh, sections there, but yeah, there, there's there's going to be hardly any uh, change in the efficiency of the ABC or uh, the the output that's uh, that's put. 
Exactly, and then that's why it needs to be axed. I mean, it's just um, basically used as a brainwashing tool, and it's, it's just not going to go anywhere. I mean, if if it's so tightly controlled by uh, just a few people with a, a very specific agenda, then it's going to be very difficult for any change um, and balance to come to the ABC. And that, that's why, um, although there are people out there that think that, you know, there, there could be changes coming into place that they could start to drift a little bit more to the centre or make it a little bit more moderate. It just won't happen because, you know, it's they, just too tightly controlled amongst just several people in high positions that will never let anybody from outside come in and do that. So it, it makes it a difficult circumstance. And, I mean, at the end of the day, we haven't really got much choice here. So someone has to come out and, and you know, really pull the pin or, or just do something in order for it to collapse in its own way because it, at the moment it's just causing a lot of damage apart from some shows like Four Corners and a couple others. I mean, everything else on it is is pretty much a waste. And, I mean, then you got, obviously, the side um, channels like Viceland from the SBS, which is just a total, you know, degenerate network, of course. And, you know, like, I mean, it's just... Then you've got your kids' channels, of course, that have a lot of, you know, um, uh, LGBT agendas and, you know, political correctness. And it's just a farce, you know. Something needs to be done about this. An interesting cultural uh, development uh, that happened over the past week was uh, Sam Newman, who uh, is on the, the AFL uh, footy show. Um, I'm not sure if all of our uh, northern... Uh, listeners and viewers uh, know uh, who Sam Newman is. Well, you should. He's He's been there since the beginning, since uh, 1994. Uh, the footy show has been a, a ratings hit for, for Channel 9 for many years, but uh, the audience has been turning to over to Channel 7 to watch uh, their uh, AFL comedy program, uh, The Front Bar. Uh, now, Sam Newman, he was known throughout the years uh, for his uh, anti-political uh, correctness uh, style. There was heaps of uh, controversies he was I involved in. Uh, he, he was, uh, or you'd, you'd say he was unashamedly chauvinist, obviously uh, had a way with uh, women and he didn't have time, much time for, for feminists. He once uh, called uh, women uh, liars in, in response to uh, their claims of uh, sexual misconduct of AFL players. He also questioned uh, why we needed to have females on uh, AFL uh, boards. Uh, also, uh, most recently, he spoke out against the, the AFL uh, endorsing uh, same-sex marriage. Uh, but the, the, the best thing about Sam Newman was that he never apologised. He was never sacked by Channel, Channel 9. He got suspended uh, for a few uh, weeks, but uh, uh, he, he, he was just, he just did not, did not care about uh, his critics. He's just saying, I am who I am. I'm going to say my views. You can deal with it. I'm always going to have my uh, detractors. And sadly, with the, the footy show looking like it's airing its final show uh, this week as grand final edition, I don't think we'll ever see his like again. Yeah, well, Sam Newman, although I personally don't know a lot about him being um, someone that lives up north, like you were saying, but um, he was somebody that wasn't politically correct. He was somebody that definitely had no shame, that, that made sure that his views were aired. He didn't ever apologise for them. And you've got to respect that. I mean, the description actually that you gave of Sam Newman just actually sounded like uh, your average Aussie bloke. And that that's the thing. I mean, people need those kind of figures where they can feel they relate to, that they can connect with. And he's somebody that people can look to and say, oh, yeah, this guy looks like my best mate. Um, you know, I mean, we don't need these uh, elitist robots going in there, you know, acting all sort of, you know, um, like like they're in another world. You know, we need normal people. And he was a normal person. And this is why he made that show so great. And he was able to, you know, um, have such a great career in that. And 
a lot of what he said was true, you know. I mean, he's um, someone that's uh, told it like it is when it came to, you know, um, people lying regardless of, of, of gender, whether, whether it came to, you know, feminism, um, politicising um, sport in regards to SSM, which was, you know, disgraceful and, and really, you know, um, sport should be left alone, although the left seem to, to want to try every avenue when it comes to pushing their uh, message forward. So this this is the type of people we need. It's a shame to obviously lose him um, and hopefully he may be able to uh, return under a different role um, or, or there will be other people like him out there that will come in the future that will be able to represent that aspect um, of your, your average Aussie person. He's 72. Uh, he was earning close to uh, 2 million a year. So he, he probably doesn't need to, to do this uh, anymore. He can uh, easily retire and he's a big uh, car uh, enthusiast. He can probably have uh, a lot of fun with those in his uh, retirement. But yeah, there, a lot of people thought that the, the footy show over the last few years had become more uh, diluted, more politically correct. I mean, they uh, put as one of the, the co-hosts um, uh, Rebecca Madden, the first uh, woman to, uh, to to host the footy show, and she was seen to sort of go in there and, and keep the, the, the boys in line because that is why the left did not like the, the footy show so much because it was just a bunch of blokes being blokes. I mean, they used to... I used to watch it quite a bit in the day. They used to, you know, rip on each other. It's like, hey, like there's this like uh cartoon character that looks like you ha ah, like that's uh like it's funny it was, it was it was just a whole bunch of guy things and of course the left couldn't stand that because you know that's toxic masculinity is guys getting together and having having a good time yeah and and the the funny thing is in this is that exactly happened the same way with the nrl footy show exactly the yes, same yes. um you know, they they um had to have their token female come in later on in the in the um uh, in the later years of the of the program um to try and sort of you know create this uh you know um non -to non toxic sort of um you know this quota so to speak like like they did on the AFL one, and I, I think by doing that they lost a lot of fans in it. You know, I mean a lot of people saw that as a um an opportunistic kind of virtue signal and. And by doing it, it, it didn't favour them at all because they, they they tried to be something they weren't. And people knew that um, it wasn't natural for this, you know, token blonde female to be on that panel, you know. It just wasn't something that um, fitted right, you know. It didn't look like... And not to say that the person didn't know what they were talking about. They're obviously, you know, um, someone that loves the game and knows a lot about it and, and you know, can provide to the discussion. But because she was purposefully put in that position just to prove a purpose and a point, it was very easily detected by the, per, uh, for, by the average Australian, you know, and they didn't like that. And they suffered greatly for that, you know, all because they wanted to prove this pointless, you know, um, uh, virtue signal, you know, it was ridiculous. Yeah, and I say the reason that we'll never see the likes of Sam Newman again. I mean, the footy show started, what, 1994? That's when you could still uh, uh, be uh, yourself, be anti-politically correct on, on TV. As we know, with oh, the the quality of comedy programs that are being put out today, I mean, uh, you only have to look at that ABC comedy channel. I mean, uh, comedy is so safe and tries to be inoffensive. You can just think, well, if... Channel 9, they put it on another footy show next year. It'll just be the most safe and tame uh, jokes you, you you could imagine. <laughs> and we'll just... Uh, and if there's an up-and-coming young, young, a young comedian who's making edgy jokes, I mean, they'll be... Uh, the, the networks will be spooked on what people are saying on uh, social media, on uh, Junkie or BuzzFeed, and they're like, oh, you must apologise, otherwise we'll get rid of you. <laughs> You're probably going to end up with some uh, Tom Bollard sort of uh, tier comedy coming up in the future, <laughs> more of that sort of thing, um, because that 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 is um, that is the type of comedy that they um, that they want. You know, this sort of um, uh, rip into um, 
what what is the norm and, and, and try and push these um, radical sort of ideas and, and, and make it all a joke so it sort of, you know, um, doesn't look like it's serious, although they're getting their message across. It's... Um, yeah, you know, they've they've learned these lessons over the years that I mean, I mean you know, and and you've had a lot of um a lot of people that have, you know, pandered um to 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 this like Eddie Maguire, you know, over the years that he's had to sort of, you know, apologize and, and you know, all, all this sort of thing. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, the the show is um supposed to be um a group of guys gathering together and discussing football in the same way that um it would happen um, in any sort of household, you know what I mean? Like in any sort of town, you know, in, in a small village town, you get your couple of guys and, you know, watching the footy together, having a barbie, the rest of it. I mean, that, that's what they're supposed to represent. And they're continuing to throw things at it to try and mould it into something that it isn't. And it has greatly affected them. And obviously, you know, like you said, it's now going to be axed, um, that, that he's not going to be on board anymore, which is a shame. But, um you know, this is what happens, you know, sometimes you, you get such great shows and the left will just attack it unless it's one of their, um, you know, one of their shows, one of their, if it's pushing their points of view. And it's just very sad to see. Over in the United States, uh, Donald Trump's uh, Supreme Court uh, nominee to replace the retiring uh, Justice Anthony Kennedy, uh, Brett Kavanaugh. Now, despite the fact that he's a moderate conservative, I mean, he he said that he's not in favour of overturning uh, precedent, which means he probably wouldn't vote to overturn Roe versus Wade, which legalised abortion in the United States. But uh, Democrats and progressive, because he's uh, uh, Trump's uh, nominees, they, they believe that he's going to basically destroy uh, everything that uh, they uh, value in the the United States, and uh, now things have, have really got uh, muddy in the campaign against Kavanaugh because uh, there's this uh, college professor, Christine Blassie Ford, that claims uh, Kavanaugh uh, sexually assaulted her at a party in 1982. Uh, when uh, he was 17, she was 15. Now, there wasn't actually, it wasn't actually a rape. Uh, they're both there, their clothes were, were on at the time. So it was just a, uh, or if it, if it did happen, it was just a lot of uh, inappropriate touching att uh, his attempt to force uh, him on her. Now, uh, Ford, she only remembered this in therapy in 2012 and immediately uh, alarm bells go off when s somebody suddenly remembers in a therapy uh, session. I mean, we all have heard the stories of uh, therapists uh, planting uh, sexual assaults uh, in, in, their, in their patient's head and nobody uh, remembers that, that or oh, uh, associates of Kavanaugh remember that this party even even took place. How does that even happen? I mean, um, you know, how 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 does somebody, and we're looking at um, over thirty five years ago now, um, all of a sudden say, oh, you know, thirty five years ago this happened to me. I mean, if it was such a concern, you would have thought that they would have raised the issue at the time. Um, now, I understand that uh, some people, when they go through these things, they can um, go um, uh, suffer trauma and depression and whatnot, of course, you know, but um, why 35, I mean, 35 years, I mean, you know, that's, it's, you know, it's not even like, you know, mums down the line and, and then, you know, being ready to go out and actually, you know, say what it is. It, it, it's almost like we're seeing these days that, uh, people are conveniently um, coming out at specific times in order to try and damage someone. Um, so they're waiting for, for that person to get into a particular position and then all of a sudden you, you'll get a dozen people coming out saying, oh, yeah, you know, this person did this and that. And we don't really know the truth because, I mean, it's 35 years ago, like, you know, I mean, you don't have any DNA evidence, no video surveillance, no nothing. All you have is a hearsay. Um, and, I mean, of course it looks bad when so many women come all out at once, but this is all, a, you know, I mean, this is a strategy here. Um, and I'm not saying that 
um, some of these guys are, are innocent. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that there there are guys out there that are guilty of, of doing um, the wrong thing. But at the same time, we haven't, we, we can't just put our heads in the sand here and say, yep, we, we have to trust um, everybody that comes out and, and speaks this because we just don't have any evidence to suggest that this is true. I mean, we're just going on what they are saying here and it's very easily, uh, very easy to manipulate and, and to have several people come out at once and say it if there is some sort of gain uh, for them. You know, I mean, it, it just seems odd that it all happens all at once, you know? An interesting side uh, note is I, I mentioned that Ford, she's a professor. Uh, she hasn't got uh, very uh, good reviews on this website, uh, Rate uh, My Professor. She's got 2.3 out of uh, five stars with many students saying she's the, the worst uh, professor that they ever had. Oh, but mysteriously, uh, uh, her uh, profile has disappeared from that uh, uh, site uh, in the, the wake of these uh, uh, allegations, which is uh, interesting. Uh, now, in response to Ford's allegations, 65 uh, women wrote a letter defending Brett Kavanaugh's uh, character. Two of them went on Fox News because it was alleged that uh, uh, Kavanaugh was drunk uh, at, the, at the time, they said, well, we never saw him uh, drink. He was one of the, the people who uh, would look out for, for other people at things like parties. And, and now the, uh, a second woman has come forward, De uh, Deborah Ramirez, who uh, she, uh, uh, she, as a student at Yale, she claimed that uh, at a party, a, a drunk, Kavanaugh in 1983 uh, exposed uh, himself to her, uh, rubbed uh, his genitals uh, on her, and and so now that the Democrats are demanding a uh, FBI investigation into these allegations, uh, Ford is now going to testify uh, at the the Senate uh, Judiciary uh, Committee, and so now the Democrats thinking, oh, we've we've really uh, got. Uh, got the, the ammunition now to destroy him or at least uh, put him through hell. It, it doesn't matter if these allegations are true or not. We can basically uh, just uh, drag out this investigation so he has to be withdrawn. Well, they have no proof. That's the problem. I mean, if they had reported it when it happened, they, 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 I'm sure they would have had um, some evidence, um, you know, other people, witnesses or whatever. I mean, you can't, when you leave it this long, all of a sudden come out and, and say, this happened, believe me, because I said it happened. I mean, it's just not good enough, you know? I mean, um, it, it, this is the thing. I mean, if it was such a problem, they should have aired their views then and, and told the authorities. I mean, and, and they didn't. I mean, I'm not sure why that is the case, but um, why is it all of a sudden that, you know, um, I mean, and, and you've got two women come out here Okay, that's fair enough, but then at the same token, you've got 65 women defending him. So you've got two women on one hand, 65 on the other. I mean, when you look at, you know, just that alone, and considering there's no evidence involved here, I mean, who do you believe here? I mean, it, it seems like you'd go with the 65 rather than the two, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's uh, progressives only remember that they were sexually assaulted uh, by uh, conservatives when they're about to reach a position of, of high office. Uh, let's remember that in the 2016 presidential election, there were all these women who suddenly remembered that they were um, sexually assaulted by uh, Donald Trump. Yeah, it, it, that, that, that's what happens always. And um, the funny thing is, I mean, um, for instance, uh, there's been a lot of uh, incidences of sexual assault within the Greens here in Australia, yet there isn't really a, much of a uh, commotion about it. You know, it's very sort of, you know, soft and just, you know, makes the makes a, a little news article in the paper and that's about it. Um, but, I mean, you know, when, when they were quizzed on it, on, on the situation there, they, they, they sort of had the view of, oh, you know, we'll look into it, you know, we'll see, we'll see what we can find out, you know, very generic kind of answers. But when it was um, a conservative, for instance, like you mentioned, um, a celebrity, someone with sort of some status, with money, um, it's a massive investigation on the news, you know, nonstop for days, um, then all of a sudden, you know, you get another dozen people coming forward. 
You know, I mean, it, it just seems so fake, you know, and I'm not saying it is because I don't know ultimately, but it just looks like something out of a script, you know, it just looks fake because of how it's set out. It's almost like it's planned, you know, I mean, uh, waiting for somebody to go into a, a high position or how can we destroy their opportunity here? Easy. We, we accuse them of sexual assault, you know? Oh yeah, this person, you know, was a bit of a, um, um, you know, a party sort of guy back in his early day. All right, let, let's say that this happened. And I mean, like I said, it could it, something could have happened. I'm not saying that it definitely didn't, but why conveniently wait to a, a, a point? Um, and I mean, this is the point here, you know, that I'm saying here is if it was, is it to score a political point or is it because it affected them and traumatised them? You know, I mean, they like to make it out that they traumatised them, but if it did, they could have mentioned it far earlier. But they didn't. They waited for that position where they could try and, you know, ruin an opportunity for this person. So it's almost like using it as a political advantage. That isn't trauma. I mean, for someone to be traumatised, they would air their views um, at the time and say, this has happened, this has, you know, made me depressed, it's made me upset. You know, they don't just say, okay, okay, you know, this was an unfortunate circumstance. I'll just wait 20, 30 years down the line, wait for him to get into the right position, and then I'll knock him down and get my revenge that way. I mean, that, that that's just so disingenuous, you know? Yeah, and uh, Kavanaugh, he's gone on TV uh, with his wife. He's, he's basically uh, said that he wasn't, he was hardly a drinker in his uh, youth and also said that he was a virgin until later in life, which mm. is, uh, he feels that he has to disclose uh, the, uh, this fact. And uh, Trump uh, mm. and the and the most of the Republicans are defending him. Trump tweeted that the Democrats are working hard to destroy a wonderful man, which is which is true. I mean, if you, if you watch uh, Brett Kavanaugh on on TV, he's you, you you can tell that when he's denying it, he's it's it's genuine. Like this is not who I, who I am. But of course, the the left don't care. It's tear him down by any means necessary. I mean, the the midterms are in November. They're they're probably see, seeing if they can get. They only need uh, two uh, Republicans to vote down his confirmation, and they're probably hoping the Democrats that mm. they can win control of the Senate in the midterms and hopefully get somebody who or is ex Trump will then nominate somebody uh, acceptable to them because uh, they're obviously uh, quite bitter the Democrats that uh, Republicans were able to stall Obama's a. Uh, uh, nominee for the Supreme Court to replace uh, Antonin Scalia, uh, Merrick Garland, where uh, Trump, he uh, nominated and was later confirmed by the Senate, uh, Neil Gorsuch, who was a much more uh, constitutional uh, conservative. So there's a lot of revenge there that the, the Democrats want. Yeah, it seems like a big game to me. And I mean, we're seeing this um, happening uh, in very recent times, you know, the, the Me Too movement, of course, and, you know, this just um, virtue signalling, playing victim, you know, um, somebody looking you at the wrong way, oh, yeah, this is, you know, assault, this is this and that. It's just getting really ridiculous and out of hand. Um, I mean, one thing actually that I can say, there's not many men that will come out and say, oh, you know, look, I was a virgin, you know, in my younger years, so I couldn't have done it because of this, because I was, you know, pure. I'll tell you now, honestly, there will not be many men out there that will come out and say that um, to their defence. I mean, this actually is something that really makes it sound like he's genuine. I mean, many men, even if they were accused of it, they wouldn't come out and say that because of this whole sort of... Um, um, embarrassment, so to speak, because it's, you know, such a taboo or, you know, like, um, you know, that they feel like they look soft and not, not so much a Chad, like, you know, they want to look like, I mean, it, it's stupid. Like, I mean, um, I actually, um, can say that it was great that he came out and say that, but there's not many people that will. And that makes his story more genuine because, um, what for, for him to put it out there, something personal of his past. Um, which could cause a lot of, you know, um, 
um, people to, you know, make fun of him and, and all that sort of thing, that in itself is very big of him. I mean, it's, um, it's not something, even if someone was guilty, trying to find excuses to try and sort of um, make, him, make himself sound genuine when he was fake, most guys wouldn't even, you know, go down that far to, to try and, you know, pull that line out unless they are genuine, you know? Like, I mean, so this is something that makes his story very credible. It's a shame to, to see uh, a man go through uh, this. And, well, well certainly uh, I published a story on uh, this uh, f uh, this uh, issue a while back, and it's completely uh, turbocharged. So we'll see if it does uh, derail uh, his uh, uh, confirmation, whether it does so enough uh, doubt in in some Republican uh, senators. But yeah, it's a it's a concerning uh, development. But uh, thanks, uh, Damien, for, for coming on uh, again. Hopefully, I can have you on a bit more uh, regularly uh, into into the the, the future. And of course, uh, uh, take care of your yourself and your young family. Thanks for having me, Tim. All right, everybody, that's the show for today. We'll be on our way to Liberty Fest in Brisbane soon, which we are a sponsor of this year. We will be recording several podcast episodes there with various speakers, which we'll be releasing over the next week. As far as I know, you can still get some last-minute tickets to Liberty Fest by going to libertyfest.org.au. While we are there, we are hoping to take out the Free Speech Coalition's Independent Media Award, which we made the final six list of nominees. Please make sure you cast your vote for the Unshackled in the final round of voting by going to freespeechcoalition.info slash media award. There are a couple of public rallies which our followers may be interested in attending over the next month. There is the International Freedom of Speech Day, which is being held on Saturday, October 6th at 12pm at Wiley Park, Lakemba in Sydney. You may remember that Lakemba was the suburb where Lauren Southern was told by New South Wales to police to move along when she approached the local mosque. Uh, as so, it has been chosen as the location where free speech in Australia needs to be defended the most. It has been organised by the True Blue Crew New South Wales and by Patriot lawyer John Bolton. In Melbourne, there is the annual March for the Babies being held at Treasury Gardens on Saturday the 13th of October at 1pm. It is held every year during this time as it is the anniversary of the 2008 passing of Victoria's Abortion Law Reform Bill, which legalised abortion in uh, this state until birth. It is held to remember all the babies killed and to advocate for the law to be changed to be better protect the unborn. Next up on the touring schedule in Australia is internet television personality and founder of the Proud Boys, Gavin McGuinness, who appeared on a previous episode of this show and is pumped to be coming to Australia and causing some mayhem here. He's being hosted by Penthouse Australia and you can book your place by going to gavinlive.com.au. As always, we would like to remind you, please consider becoming a patron of The Unshackled at patreon.com slash The Unshackled. Or like many of you are doing, please send us a direct contribution via our PayPal link, which is paypal.me slash The Unshackled. All of it goes a long way to making sure The Unshackled continue bringing you high quality content and covering all of the news and producing all the shows that we can. So please consider it. So thanks once again for your company and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.